In this video, we're going to make a jump mechanic in our 2D RPG uh, series. So this is a video that I'm excited to do because like there's not much video about that. I don't think I've ever seen a video made on that topic. So I'm very happy to show you how I do. I don't know if it's the ultimate way to do it, but me personally, it's a way that works very fine for me. So anyway, if you don't have the asset, you can check in the description. I have put the link to my HIO and you can uh, get them. So anyway, let's get started. So now we're going to continue and this time we're going to configure the jump. So for configuring the jump, what we need to do is we need basically to do the same thing that we have done for the sword. Uh, we need to create here in the physics process delta, we need to create a new player state. And this time it's going to be player underscore state dot jump. And we're going to jump and we're going to set it to be jump function. We need to create that function now. So I'm just going to come here. I'm going to say func jump. And then I'm just going to pass for now. And basically, we need to do the exact same thing that we have done with our swirl. So we need to create an input. So we go to project, project setting. And here I'm going to create a new action and I'm going to call it a jump. And I'm going to add it. And what I'm going to do now is that a jump, I'm going to just click on plus and I'm going to tap a key. So for me, it's going to be, I think I'm going to put it on C. Uh, and so I'm going to click on OK. And then I have still my uh, controller connected. So I'm going to click on the plus and I'm going to just tap on, I think X will be good. So X, voila. And so now I can just close it. OK. And I have my jump, uh, my jump input uh, right there. So that's good. So now here in my uh, move function, uh, I'm going to just click here. I'm going to make some space and I'm going to do if input dot is action just press, it's going to be jump. Then I'm going to change the current state, current state, current state, I can't type, uh, to be equal to player state dot jump. And so then here in jump, what I need to do is I need to trigger uh, the anim state travel jump. So for that, I need to copy that and I'm going to come here and I'm just going to pass it and I'm going to replace the walk by jump. And normally that was a jump with a capital uh, uh, J if I remember right. So let me see in my, in my uh, animation tree. So the jump is there. So, okay, that's perfect. So now in the jump, we need to do the exact same thing that we have done in the sword as well, which is we need to reset in the animation player. We need to reset at the end of the jump the uh, player state. So I need to go to my jump. So I'm going to go to jump down, for example. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-show you how to do. So you click on add track, call method track. We're going to go where our uh, script uh, is. So here we need to go to player. Click on OK, and we have that on state reset function that we have created in the last video. So here I'm going to just reuse it by at the end of my jump animation, I'm going to right click insert key and I'm going to look for on state reset. And so when the animation will have been uh, fully played, it's going to reset the state to player state dot move that holds uh, at the same time our input if we are moving and our animation if we are not moving. So now that this is done, because the animation is the same length on all the jump, what I can do is I can just say edit, copy track, player, copy, and then here I can go to jump left, edit, pass track. It's going to pass it there. Then I can come to jump right, edit, pass track, copy it here, and then jump up, edit, pass track, and it copy it here. So with that done, now we should be able to jump normally. So let's have a look. So I come here and you can see I tap on C and I can jump. Problem is that for now I can't jump and move at the same time. So we're going to be in need to fix that. But first, what I want to uh, show you is how we can uh, also deactivate the collision shape, because that's the thing that we need to understand here. So in 2D, uh, if we were working in 3D, this will not be a problem. But because here we are working in 2D, uh, we need to fake the jump. This is not a real jump. Like we are not changing the 
um, the velocity, we are not changing anything, we are just faking the jump because we are in a 2D environment. And because we are in that 2D environment, we want to uh, disable the, um, the collision shape when we're going to jump because we maybe want to, let's say that we have like uh, the crate, let's say that the crate is here, maybe we want to jump over that as an obstacle. And if we uh, let the collision shape activated, then it's going to block automatically. So what we can do is that we can, in the script, we can create other function. So for that, I'm going to come here and I'm going to call it func. Uh, I'm going to call it uh, clear collision shape, clear collision. I'm going to call it like this. And here what I want is I want to access my collision shape. So my player uh, is nested in this way, it's created this way. We have the player node and then we have all the other nodes that are like a, a child of the main node player. So here what I can do is I can just do dollar sign collision shape and then here I can disable it. So I can say for example disable equal to true. And then we need as well to have it, uh, we need to have it back when we are like, um, when we have finished the jump. So we need to create another function and this one is going to be uh, create collision. And here I'm going to do the exact same thing, but this time it's going to be disabled, going to be false. So now that this is done, uh, we can uh, basically do the same way. So we can, for example, go to our uh, animation and here on jump, so I'm on jump up, uh, jump up. <laughs> I can go to add track, call method track. I can call my player here and I can click on OK. And then I can just right click, insert key, and I can look for my clear collision. And then at the end, I can uh, right, uh, right uh, click, insert key, and I can look for my create collision. So this will deactivate the collision shape and this will recreate it. So now we can just go to edit, copy track. Uh, I think this is this one. So we're going to copy it and then we can go to uh, jump, right? Edit, pass track. Let's see, it works. That's the one. Then jump left, edit, pass track. It works too. And then here, uh, I need to go to uh, jump down, edit, and pass track. And so now everything works. So now let's see if it deactivates when we jump. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump now. You can see that it deactivates and it reactivated. So now what we need to do is we need to take uh, care of the, the fact to be able to move while we are jumping. So for moving the player now, while we are jumping, what we need to do is uh, just add two lines of code. Uh, for that, we just need to take a look at how our move function works. We have our input movement here that is uh, a vector 2.0, and uh, we have like uh, set up that input movement to be uh, getting the uh, vector. So like when we are like pressing our right or left arrow key, all those kind of things. And uh, we have set after that velocity with like th those input movement multiplied by speed. And uh, we have one thing that is very important, it's this line here, move and slide. And basically what we need to do is we just need to get that line, velocity, uh, input movement times speed. We need to put it into our function here, jump. We can just go under. We need to put it like this. I'm just going to indent it nice. And then I just need to get that move and slide function. And now it will work. So let's have a look. I'm going to launch the game. And if I jump, you can see that now I can jump. So that's cool. The problem that we have, though, is that when we are jumping, uh, we can't stop. So if I uh, do like, um, if I release the key, I don't stop. Like it goes until the um, the jump is re is uh, resetting the state. So that can be something that is good for you. That's something that can be not good. Uh, me, I think personally, it could be a good thing to keep it this way because of one simple reason, which is that if we are able to interrupt the jump of while we are jumping, we're going to create problems with a uh, collision shape like this. So for example, I can come here and let's see how it works. Come here. And you see, like it has created a sort of weird, weird thing. And if I, uh, that's something we can maybe like prevent in the future video. But if we leave it like this, you see, up, it works fine. So if we like coming to something, 
it jumps nice. So uh, for now, I don't have found like a perfect way yet to um, to interrupt the jump um, in a way that is not creating any problem, but that's something I'm gonna uh, look after uh, in this series of uh, video. Not in the next one though, because uh, we have like a lot of other stuff to do. But that's something that already now is nice, and that's that's a mechanic that I've I haven't been seen uh, taught a lot. So I hope it has been helpful for you. And me, I want to thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. So see you. So that's it for this video. I hope it has been helpful for you. So if it's the case, don't hesitate to give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Uh, and also check the link in the description if you want. I have courses, I have lots of things in the, in the description. So anyway, I want to thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.